Alrighty, folks, just a quick one, hopefully. Hopefully I don't ramble on too long. Someone in my comments uh, was asking about, could I do a video about showing how we can generate images online for cheap? And I thought, well, I'll do one and do it for free, uh, unlimited. So this is how you can generate AI images completely free. There is no daily rate limits. There is only limits per minute, which we'll get into. And this is using together.ai. And I'll show you how to get set up with together.ai. I'll show you a couple of uh, examples in NAN, uh, and then just leave you with that knowledge. So first of all, you wanna go over to together.ai, get signed in, it's free. Uh, I'm signed in, I've got $1 on my account. This is what they give you, but I haven't spent any of that. Head over to the settings and you want to get your API key. Uh, yes, API key. And then I'm just going to regenerate one here. You'll have one at the top. I'm obviously going to regenerate this after this video, but I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to put it in, in a notepad here just so I've got it for later use. So that is in a notepad here. From there, you want to go over to the models. Scroll down and they've got their flux range and they allow you to use the flux Schnell for free. Now, flux has got a bunch of models. Schnell is their lowest tier, but it still produces very good results and it's free. So select that model, go over to the playground. And at this point, you can just, uh, you can just make images, right? A dog, we'll just, we'll get really creative here and make an image of a dog. And it's extremely quick. There you go, image of a dog. Now to get this into NAN, so you can generate images as part of your workflows or whatever, head over to the API, go over to the curl section copy this curl command so it's going to copy all this you can just click the copy button there which is what i've just done and then in a blank nan workflow here i'm just going to bring in a http node i'm going to import the curl command uh, it's already got one there i'm just going to import the one i've just copied and this is going to do a couple of things it's going to set the url it's going to set it as a post it's going to set headers and then it's going to set the body here and you can pretty much see what this is doing, right? It's selecting the model. You've got your prompt there. Let's get creative again. We're gonna put a cat this time. The width, the height, how many, uh, the number of steps. I never mess around with that field. I just keep it at four. Uh, and then this this stuff here, right? I just keep, it, keep everything as default. The only thing you will change is obviously the prompt. That'll be a, a dynamic value in your workflows. And then you've got this uh, headers field here. Now you could just put your API key there and then call it done, right? That's fine. But if you need to set this node up again, that's going to be, you're going to have to set this up every time, right? So we'll get rid of this headers and we'll set it as stored credentials so we can reuse that. So we'll just come over to authentication here, create credentials header auth now i've already got one set up here but we'll set up a new one um in fact i can just put in the i could just put in the uh, token we just generated right so the way this works is you need to put authorization in the top there and then your token here but what you do need to keep in mind is you need to put this bearer in front of the token like that have a one space and then that's it if we save that no i don't want to save that password there so that's now saved that can be reused now we don't need to put it in the headers here this is going to do it for us automatically and if we just test this this uh, this actually should just work there we go so that is actually work now what it's done is it's it's give us a base 64 a string here which we need to convert to a binary file and that's really straightforward so 
we'll just put in a set node here. And I'm just going to name it base 64. And then for the value, I'm going to drag this B64 underscore JSON in. And this is just going to convert that to a string. Even though it sort of technically is a string. There we go. And then we just get this. And then we want to convert that to a binary. So if we just type in convert. Converts JSON data to a binary file. Perfect. Uh, move base64 string to a file. That's exactly what we want. And for the input field, we're just going to put base64. And that's going to be this field here. Now we just run that again. And now we've got a file and then we can view this. And there you go. It's it's that simple. Obviously, you would, you know, put this as part of a workflow. This would be a in the HTTP. This would be a, a dynamic value, right? So this would be the prompt would be coming from somewhere else. And then the end result, you'd be doing something with this, right? You'd be uploading it to your Google Drive or sticking it in your Airtable, Base Row, whatever. And you can run this. Like I said, there's no limits. So if we just have a look at the, the rate limits real quick. On the free plan, when you sign up, you don't put any money into it. Uh, it says here, due to high demand, the flux Chanel, uh, the free model has a specific rate limit of 10 images per minute. Uh, and then, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a pain. Now, to get around that, here's an example of if you was generating more than one image, right? You've got this in a loop. You need to make 20 images. Uh, how'd you get around that? So this, this is just a, this is just a, a generic thing I've set up here just so we can get some items. It generates image prompts. Um, I mean, I could show you this, right? It's uh, create six, six different variations of the following animal and then style. And then I've just got change the animal, change the styles. Uh, that is going to generate six of them. It's going to output them like this because of the parser. So that's the parser there. Then it gets split into six items. So this knows an array is coming in. And then it's going to split them out. Uh, and this is uh, failed. Now this is the 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 route the the model I'm using here is Open Routes Free Model, and they are good, but they do often come back with with errors, right? Because the servers are overloaded, or whatever the case may be. We can just run that again. Maybe it works this time. Maybe it doesn't. Cannot read property. Come on now. Okay. And then it finally works. So that's one of the disadvantages to using free models with Open Router. If I was using uh, any other model that didn't have this free tag on the end, there wouldn't have been no issues there. So I'm just going to pin these so I don't need to run them again. And I'm going to click go. It's just going to send that data we've just generated. So this is where we get around that rate limit per, per minute, right? So this is going to go through. It's going to take the six items. So this is six image prompts. It's going to go to Together AI, which is what we set up before. And this is where you stick that dynamic prompt prompt, <laughs> prompt value in. It's going to convert it to a base64 string. It's going to output the raw file. And it's going to just keep, go over this. It's going to do this six times. And then we've got a wait node. And we're just saying wait 10 seconds. This seems to be the, the magic number here, 10 seconds. I've not had any issues with this. But it does take a while. So so basically each image is going to take around sort of 13, 13 seconds, 14 seconds to make. 
this is obviously going to take a couple of seconds just to initially get that generation going but it's extremely fast then we're waiting a further 10 seconds and this just means we ain't running into issues right we could have 150 items going in here so let's just say we had 150 image prompts this would get through them every single one of them and then it's done so then the loops come out it's done and now we have all these items and these uh yeah these these are what they are i can show you the image prompts for this this is the uh if you're curious right so that's taking in the animal styles and then we prompted it to basically create it's been prompted specifically for flux so like i said it's nothing special going on there you you're welcome to use them and that's it uh i i i do have an example where i put this into a, a little assistant here i create a little sub workflow so my assistant can create images um and i can show you quickly how that works i can just say uh create an image of a mouse uh in a super hero costume and then it should go off sit in the image generator and then we get an image back looks kind of weird but this is, <laughs> this is more of a test than anything uh, so that's kind of a use case where you could use it yeah, and then the the assistant comes back and says oh great this amazing image that looks like poo and this is just a sub workflow I will quickly show this and this is it here we've got an execution node so this is what it's what it's coming in it's going to give a prompt and it's going to give a message ID in this instance uh, the message ID if I go back to the actual assistant as part of its prompt I've said some tools require a message ID here is that and it's just taken a message ID that came in from the telegram nothing too complicated there this comes in uh i'm just setting the, the prompt there even though it's sort of already set and then this is what we set up before right this is exactly the same there's no difference here we've got the prompt as a dynamic value in this instance i've got the image as a square ratio one to one 1024 by 1024 base 64 we've we've done that convert to a binary and then in this case i'm not going to send a binary back to the agent i'm actually just going to send it directly to the telegram in this instance and that's why i have the message id set in the the kind of in the main agent here so it knows when it contacts this it needs to send an image prompt and a message id uh, and then yeah you've got a limited messages unlimited images in your assistant and yeah i think that kind of covers it i'm not going to keep going on about that right but that's that's the very basics uh, what did we set up first that this here this is the very basic so if ever you're seeing a tutorial and they're telling you to use like a an image prompter and it's going to cost you x amount right this is going to be exactly the same thing that they're setting it up they're just using a different provider that, that costs money like i say this isn't a top tier image generator so don't expect amazing results they are somewhat decent depending on what you want to use it for yeah and that's about it i think that pretty much covers it leave your comments and all that if i missed anything or you've got any any questions